All right, collective, let's get into a reading. So, as soon as I went to go bring in your energy, I started hearing the song Papa Top Again. I don't think that's the, the name of the song. Anyways, it's an old country song. Somebody here could play pool or somebody here could be like a gamer. Just because I heard in the song, I just got time for one more round. So, set them up, my friend. But the first thing I thought of was pool. So, somebody could be a, a person who plays pool, whether professionally, just to chill. So, let's see what this person's thinking and feeling. Overall energy for this relationship. Okay, somebody here could have sabotaged the relationship. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, somebody here could have put this relationship into a place of stagnancy or I'll deal with that later. So you could have noticed that whoever I'm about to bring in could have gotten to a point of, oh, well, I can give to that later. So then it put your relationship and your dynamic in a place of it being stuck or stagnant. There is no movement forward. There's no action. There's no sense of consistency or making this a priority. That could have been someone's way of sabotaging it. So how do they feel for you? They feel like you're maybe a lesson, not a blessing. They feel, okay, so they're feeling like you made the final choice to cut love and emotion off from them. That you got to a point where you were like, okay, time for a change, time for something to end, time for something to transform. Why do they think that you did that? Because you weren't getting your way is what I heard. Because you weren't getting your way. Oh, or your intuition could have told you that they were communicating with a karmic or another person. So your intuition could have told you this person is either sabotaging or making this relationship inconsistent because they're giving time, attention, affection elsewhere. Either to a karmic ex that they didn't want to let go of so they reunited with them or they tried to make you one of many and you were like, oh no baby, I ain't one of many or one of plenty. I'm one. And actually, you can take me off of that because I'm no longer a part of this. That's how this person's viewing you. How do they view you? Yeah, they view you as someone who is keeping things close to their chest. What do they want here? What are they feeling? They're feeling... They're at a place in their life where they're just really putting in a lot of effort and dedication. They could be hanging out with friends a lot. They could be collaborating with business owners, with their job. Oh, okay. So what I'm seeing is this person is disappointed around the fact, I'm hearing Billie Eilish, I want you to stay. Someone here is disappointed because you took yourself out of something because you felt, okay, this isn't going anywhere. Here's an example. Let's say that you try to meet up with someone for a few weeks. Well, after a few weeks, you can be understanding, but after you try to meet up with them, link up with them, chill with them, hang out with them, go on a date with them, if they're continuously not making something a priority, that makes it unrequited or it makes it unbalanced. If someone wants to, they will. If they want to see you, they will. If they want to talk to you, they will. And yes, as adults, we get busy, but the things that we want in life, we're not too busy for, okay? So what could have happened here is you could have recognized that this person was sabotaging this relationship and you were like, listen, I'm not doing this. We're either building or we're not. And I'm saying clear as day that you don't want to build with me. So I'm cutting my emotions off. I'm no longer giving to you freely. I'm no longer being patient with you. An empress has the ability to know when enough is enough. An empress doesn't go around and go, well, listen, I've been trying to meet you for three months. I've been trying to go out on date with you for six months. Why won't you let me take you out? An empress is going to go, oh, you don't want to make time for me? That's fine because other people will. It isn't because... I want to be that kind of person. It's that I do recognize if somebody wants to make time for me, they will. And you're not making time for me. So I'm going to cut off my emotion. I'm going to cut off my love. Actually, we're done. You're not getting nothing else from me, period. And again, there could be 
sadness and disappointment in that because in this person's mind, they were going to take a leap or a risk on you. But again, Yeah, there's something here about you not being satisfied with what they were giving. That's what I'm saying. You were not satisfied with what they were giving. They felt that it was balanced. That you don't see it as balanced. It's interesting because they see... Okay, so you guys see this relationship two different ways. You see them as a page. You see them as someone who talks a lot of talk. An example would be, a page is a child. So if my child comes in the door right now, she could tell me all the things she wants to do. Mama, I wanna to go to the water park. Mama, I wanna to go to the mall. That's a page. You can tell me all the things in the world you wanna do. I wanna marry you. I wanna have children with you. I want you, I want a consistent relationship with you. But pages don't know how to get you there. If I give the keys to my kid and said, hey, drive us to the water park, she ain't gonna know what to do. She might be able to drive me out of this driveway and get me to the end of the road. But after that, she's gonna be like, where do I go? What do I do? That's what I'm saying here. In their eyes, they felt, I'm giving plenty. I don't know why you're being impatient. I don't know why you're acting like this. I don't know why you're taking impulsive action to cut me off or say, okay, enough's enough. I'm giving, you were receiving. So I don't understand. I thought it was balanced. But you see this person is giving you the bare minimum to keep you there. So they wanted to communicate with you. They wanted to flirt with you. They wanted to keep it kind of light and bright. Nothing more, nothing less, which is why you took yourself out of it. They're again disappointed because they wanted to take a leap or a risk on you in the near future. But someone here made a final decision. So now they could be working a lot, trying to get themselves to a place of peace. It could be happening very slowly, but it's happening nevertheless. I am saying that there's going to end up being a conversation around the ending. So, you're either going to tell them you're sorry for cutting them off, or they're going to tell you that they're sorry that you felt an ending was the only way to handle this. They're going to say, I'm sorry that you felt giving to me was going to deplete you because I kept telling you in the future, in the future, in the future. If tomorrow never comes, you don't know what the future holds. Tomorrow might not be here. That's kind of your energy. You guys approach life differently. So you got someone here disappointed. Disappointed because what they were giving was not enough. Disappointed that you're no longer accepting it disappointed that maybe now they can't come in and take a leap, take a risk the way that they wanted to. I'm wondering how you feel. Again, this person could be recovering from a sense of sadness and disappointment. What do you need to know about this person? You need to know that this person's very loving and does really care about you. You need to know that this person is trying to have the strength and the courage to do what they need to do so they can come in and tell you that they want to move this to a place of peace. So what I'm saying is that what's going to happen is when they come in, they're going to say, I'm sorry you felt that you needed to walk away. And that was the only way that you could maybe protect yourself or the only way that you could get what you wanted because you felt like I was playing games or I was slow walking it. That's not the truth. And I thought that what I was giving to you was enough, but it wasn't until you took your love, your affection and you were like cold as fucking stone, that I realized that maybe just maybe you're right. I wasn't making you a priority. I was like, no, you can wait, get over it. It'll be fine. I'm sorry. And I wanna have the strength and courage to tell you that I got everything handled. And I know you could have felt you didn't know what I was up to. I could have seemed like I had a lot of secrets and things going on, but I was handling things. I just didn't tell you about all the things that I was handling. And now that it's handled, I want to come in and tell you 
that I've always wanted this. And I've done reflection on the fact that you are what I've wanted, what I've asked for. But that maybe, just maybe, I thought it was dumb to put all my eggs in this basket when I had other things that I needed to take care of. So I think this person's going to tell you that they do see how you think that they sabotaged this. They felt that it was an unwise choice, that they were trying to do not only what was in your best interest, but in the best interest of this relationship. So an example would be, have you ever been around a couple who's fighting over something and you're like, wait, why are you guys fighting over that? They're trying to do what's in your best interest. You see it as controlling. I see it as them loving you and trying to take care of you and your well-being. Sometimes the way that we approach life is different, so different that we can fight over something that isn't even worth fighting over. That's what I'm saying here. I think you guys are going to be able to figure it out. However, I do see that someone here sabotaged this relationship and it made the other person go, you know what, bet, I'm, I'm the fuck out. And it's going to then result in you guys having to rebuild something, having to take a leap, having to take a risk, and having to see if collaborating with one another is going to work out. Because again, it's an energy of you feeling like you didn't give enough and this person feeling like they were giving as much as they could. And then you got to a point where you were like, well, you're the maker of your life. So if you think you don't have time to give, it's because you don't want to. Well, you're the maker of your life. So if you said that you can't do that, it's because you don't want to. So that could have been one of the reasons you got so maybe rigid with this person because you've seen them, you've seen them as a strong person. You've seen them as the kind of woman that she'll go after anything that she wants. So the fact that she ain't coming after you shows she don't want you. That could have been what you failed. If this is a man, you could have been like, but Danielle, he's the kind of man where he's got everything figured out. So if he wants me, he'll have me. If he wants to tell me a truth, he'll tell me a truth. That's what I'm saying here. You could see this person through eyes that are maybe not realistic. You could also see them through eyes that are very practical and logical. So you kind of, it's like you're wanting to make sense of their actions and their behavior. Well, if they really wanted me, how are they giving me this and thinking that's fair? Well, maybe right now that's all that they can give. And instead of giving that little bit of time, attention, or affection to someone or something else, they're giving it to you. And it might not be enough for you right now, but that's all that they have to give. But I'm also saying that this journey could have taken this person to their higher self. So maybe they didn't really have the ability to communicate with you in the way that they needed to. The devil. Let me figure it out. I'll figure it out. This could be someone who also internalizes problems, struggles. This could be the kind of person where they're figuring it out, but maybe they don't tell other people that they're figuring it out. So other people are kind of left in the dark, left out of the loop. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that this person is wondering how you feel. They want to fix this with you. They're in love with you. They want to come in with a lot of emotion. They're really disappointed that this is how it's went and that this is what's going to have to take place. But they do understand. This person could also be at a place where maybe environments that used to make them happy don't make them happy anymore. So maybe when you first met this person, they loved going out with friends. Maybe just maybe now when they go out with friends, it ain't that fun. It's not that exciting. They feel like something's missing. And the reason they could be feeling that way is because they're used to having you. And now they don't have you. And it's kind of bothering them. Yeah. They could also be worried that you're talking to other people or dating other people. They could be worried, anxious, or stressed if you're still single that you won't be single for long. So if I plan on fixing this, I need to fix it now. I need to go in and ask you, how do you feel? Do you even want this to have a second chance? What's your thoughts around that? Because I know you cut off your emotion, your love. You don't even want to hear from me anymore. And I get it. But what's your thoughts if I come in correctly? What would your thoughts be? If I really did come in and I was consistent and I went, okay, giving and receiving isn't enough. I need to do more. Okay, okay, okay. I, I see it. I hear it. I get it. Would you then give me everything? Would Could we fix this then? How do you feel? What's your thoughts? That's what I'm saying. 
This person could go through your text messages and your, your uh, voice memos is what I just heard. They could do this when they're at work. All right. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Gonna leave it here. Have a blessed day.